Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. We are ready to begin tonight's program on the character of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sallam. This program is meant to help us translate our Quran reading into action. How do we translate all of our recitation of the Quran into our day-to-day -day life? Uh, using the example of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as the example we follow, uh, as his wife called him, his beloved wife Aisha radiallahu anha called him a walking Qur'an. His character was the Qur'an. And before we go ahead and start, a couple of just opening announcements, inshallah, that first of all, we ask that you share the Live Now flyer on your social media. Um, so we have posted this flyer that you see here today, right now on your screen. This has been posted on our Twitter, on our Facebook, on Celebrate Mercy's Instagram. And as we say at Celebrate Mercy, sharing is sharing. So we're asking all of you, including Sheikh Hisham, inshallah, to share the Live Now flyer on social media because sharing is sharing. And we, we hope that you all, you know, maybe you will... Uh, you will encourage someone to watch today's program by simply posting it on WhatsApp or texting it or on, on, on social media. And maybe your friend will decide to watch, give this program a shot today or tonight, and it could change their life forever, inshallah. Maybe they'll hear something that changes their heart uh, and uh, impacts the rest of their Ramadan or impacts the rest of their life. So please share, inshallah, this live now flyer and encourage more people to join us tonight and benefit from a really beautiful session that we have coming up, inshallah. The link to join is, is mentioned here on the flyer, celebratemercy.com slash HP. And if you haven't registered for this program, we have a daily class also at 1 p.m. Uh, with a recitation of Surah Yaseen and a commentary on Surah Yaseen, which takes place at 1 p.m. on a daily basis with Sheikh Yasser Fahmi and Sheikh Yahya Rodas. And if you've missed any of the sessions on the Prophet's character, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or on Surah Yaseen, you can catch those on our YouTube channel, inshallah. Please make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube to learn more. As you know, Celebrate Mercy teaches about the life and character of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That, that is our mission as an organization, to teach about the Prophet وسلم, through our webinars, events, social media, campaigns, and trips. And since COVID-19, for the past eight weeks, Celebrate Mercy has been very busy organizing campaigns that helped people that were financially struggling through the coronavirus. Uh, we did this with Penny Appeal and ICNYU. And we've also been organizing webinar after webinar since COVID, the COVID-19 pandemic began, um, bringing you stories and lessons and the examples of the Prophet وسلم, online programs um, that nonstop, alhamdulillah, we've been trying our best to bring you programs and campaigns that help us to connect to the Prophet وسلم, including six Friday programs as well. So we hope that inshallah, you all will continue supporting us uh, in order that we bring you these programs on an ongoing basis, even after Ramadan. One of the ways you can do so is making sure to subscribe to us on YouTube. Uh, make sure to subscribe and click the bell to be notified. Another way is that you remember sub Celebrate Mercy with your sadaqah and with your zakat, inshallah. We are about halfway there to reaching our goal for the end of Ramadan, inshallah. And we hope that you all will continue donating, inshallah, especially on Tuesday evening when we hope to win a major prize from LaunchGood if we can get the most donations on Tuesday night, which is the 27th night of Ramadan, at least if you're in the United States it is, inshallah, help us uh, inshallah by planning to give a donation every night in Ramadan to celebrate mercy. Even if it's small, maybe one of these nights will be Laylatul Qadr inshallah, but definitely on Tuesday, we would appreciate your help because we are trying to win a $20,000 prize from Launch Good to the organization that raises the most money between Tuesday 
Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern and Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern. We would like to win that prize, hopefully, and we hope you remember us on Tuesday night, but we hope you remember us on every night until Ramadan ends to generously support Celebrate Mercy. That said, I would like to go ahead and introduce our teacher for this evening, Sheikh Hisham Mahmoud. And before he comes on live, I just want to make sure everyone knows that you can resize the screen in Zoom. So for example, if you're watching on your computer and you would like to see the speaker appearing larger uh, and you know relative to the size of the slide that we're showing, for example, we're about to show you a, a slide of, of a hadith, um, you can resize this on your computer very easily so that the speaker screen is not appearing tiny and you can always resize that, inshallah. Um, just to introduce our beloved uh, Sheikh Hisham really quickly here. There we go. Sheikh Hisham Mahmoud has studied theology, hadith, legal theory, jurisprudence, ethics, Quran recitation, and Arabic with scholars in Morocco, Mauritania, and Egypt. He has taught for more than a decade at Yale, Princeton, and Harvard, then left the academy to Institute Lanterna, an educational initiative that intends to establish learning collectives throughout North America. He continues to read with scholars and students in the United States. Currently, Sheikh Hisham resides in Pennsylvania with his wife and three children, and he wants to be like any one of them when he grows up. MashaAllah, please make sure to follow Lanterna on social media, on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. He does nightly lessons on those pages, inshallah, and on a regular basis, you can stay connected with the programs where he teaches, inshallah. That said, I'll turn it out over to Sheikh Hisham Mahmoud. He's gonna be teaching a hadith for us tonight for about 25 minutes, and then we're gonna open it up to questions and answers from the audience inshallah, so that you all can address, and, and make sure to keep type, type in your questions or raise your hand so that we'll have the questions ready by the time he's finished, inshallah. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh Hisham. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-anbiya wa al-mursaleen Sayyidina Muhammadin Sayyid al-awwalin wa al-akhirin wa ala sahabatihi wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsan ila yawm al-deen Allahumma alimna ma yanfa'una wa anfa'na bima alamtana wa zidna ilma اللهم افتح علينا فتوح العارفين بك يا فتاح يا عليم وصل اللهم وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن أنزلناه في ليلة القدر وما أدراك ما ليلة القدر ليلة القدر خير من ألف شهر تنزل الملائكة والروح فيها بإذن ربهم من كل أمر سلام هي حتى نطلع الفجر Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has in his wisdom brought us into seclusion so that we may turn with our hearts to him seeking his face on the night of power the night of decree the night of constriction the night that is the anniversary of the first time that the beloved sallallahu ever laid eyes on his beloved alayhi salam the first encounter between the messenger of allah and the messenger of allah alayhi salatu wassalam amin ya alamin and so he took this night uh, with fervor he looked for this night every year and he refused to sleep in his own home. Uh, he would sleep in the masjid instead for 10 nights and he would say, Fatlubuha, he said, Fatlubuha fil ashil awakhir, seek it out in the last 10 nights. And what we are seeking out in these last 10 nights is the face of our Lord. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to find this night. Uh, and, and find ourselves on this night and find our Lord on this night. Man arafa rabbahu faqad arafa nafsahu. Man arafa nafsahu faqad arafa rabbahu. Whosoever knows himself knows his Lord. And this is the night in which we find ourselves in the uh, compassion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the embrace of the uh, divine grace of our sustainer and our Lord and our protector on this night that he incentivizes by saying that it is better than a thousand months. It's not a thousand months, it's better than a thousand months. And a thousand was the greatest number that the Arabs had, which means that it's better than the greatest thing that you can ever imagine. 
it's better than that. It surpasses that. And only Allah knows what it is. And he even tells his Prophet ﷺ, what will make you even understand? What will make you understand what the night of Qadr is? And that's the Prophet ﷺ who was there that night. <laughs> and so what a blessed way to begin the night in the uh, shade of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What a blessed way to bring to, to, to begin this night uh, by seeking to draw closer unto our Lord through uh, manifesting the light of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in our comportment, in our character, in our propriety, in our etiquette, in our mannerisms, in our behavior, and in our conduct with those people who especially were sent to us to refine that character, the people of our own homes. The these are the people whom we take most for granted. These are the first people whom we abuse on a daily basis. And these are the same people who gave us the greatest testimony about the Prophet's character, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, those who shared his intimate space, those who were with him in private, uh, in his private, in his private um, time with himself, those who were there in his home. They're the ones who gave us the greatest testimony about his character, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so that there is no difference between his private uh, conduct and his public persona, no difference whatsoever. It is seamless. The Prophet وسلم, is just as pure as he is uh, uh, in public as he is uh, at home, and just as pure at home as he is in public. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be uh, genuine and transparent as we are at home, as we are in public, so that we don't wear the mask anymore, so that it's not easy for us to fool anyone on the outside because we are genuinely authentic on the inside. Uh, and these are the people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent to try us the most. The house is the laboratory for character development. The house is where character development uh, flourishes. The house is where character is refined. The house is where character becomes ex exquisite. And if we uh, connect our hearts to the heart of the Prophet ﷺ. And that is why I thought it called this, uh, this uh, session the heart of the Prophet ﷺ, because it's about connecting our hearts to his heart. Once we're able to do that, then our character flows with his light ﷺ. And so I would just like to uh, take a moment to describe what the word character means before we actually go to our uh, hadith of the evening. Character in the Arabic language is khuluq, and khuluq comes from the three letters khalaqa, which also means to create. So character is something that is part of our constitution, it is part of our innate um, a di a disposition. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us certain character traits in our, um, in our creation. As in, in our birth, we are born with certain character traits that, that are easy for us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will find, so you'll find that uh, among any uh, family of uh, two or three or four children, every child is different. And that is because they were given that character in that in their constitution as part of their creation. And so certain character traits will come easy to them and certain character traits they will have to work for. And so uh, a child may be empathetic naturally and another child may be ambitious naturally. And that's not that doesn't mean that the child of empathy cannot learn ambition, nor that the child of ambition cannot learn empathy. It is, it, you know, it's just certain things come easier uh, based on our character, and certain things then become part of our character based on hard work. The Prophet said that if you want good character traits, you must exercise them, you must embody them, and by embodying them, they become part of who you are over time. And so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us then to adorn ourselves with uh, noble virtues of character as the Prophet ﷺ would often uh, uh, ask Allah, Allahumma kama hassanta khalqi fa hassin khuluqi. Oh Allah, as you have beautified my aspect, as you have beautified my form, you have beautified my creation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Laqad khalaqna al insana fi ahsani taqweem. We created man into the very best of molds. So as you have beautified my creation, beautify my character. As you have beautified me in the outward, 
beautify me in the inward and character then flows from the inward to the outward so that you are all light and you reflect the light of the Prophet ﷺ upon you. You reflect the light of the divine names and attributes within you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us worthy of that station. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. And then to uh, go further into this definition of character, character uh, khuluk, uh, also uh, means that which is a portion to us. Uh, and the word khalaq uh, means uh, apportionment, right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, um, uh, fil min khalaq, that they will have no khalaq in the hereafter, in the next life. They will have no portion of it. And so the Prophet sallallahu said that uh, akhlaqakum kama qassama baynakum arzaqakum uh, the prophet that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said he that um uh, the, the prophet sallallahu said that Allah has divided among you apportioned out for you your character as he has apportioned out for you your sustenance and uh, this is the linguistic meaning of the word but when you get to a technical meaning of the word imam al-jurjani says in his book al-mufradat he says that uh, character al-khuluq he says ibaratun an hay'atin lin-nafsi rasikhatin yasduru yasduru anha al-af'al bi suhulatin wa yusr min ghayri hajatin ila fikrin wa rawiyya he said that character is a disposition that is uh, entrenched that is rooted firmly in the nafs in the person in the, in the soul it is rooted firmly in the soul from which actions emerge or manifest with ease and facility without need for premeditation or forethought what that means is that it is your immediate response to a situation. It is how you immediately respond to a situation where it, when it unfolds before you. So if someone is asking you for money uh, and uh, you have to talk your way into giving that person money, that may be in the outward an act of good character, but you cannot be called a person of good character until it comes with ease and facility without any need for forethought or premeditation. You don't need to talk yourself into it. It is just your automatic response to a situation when it uh, unfolds before you. So that when you ask for something, you, are, you already find your, 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 your hand in your pocket giving before you even process the question, before you even process the ask, before you even process the request or what's happening, you realize that this person is in need and already your hand is in your pocket to fulfill that need. Now you are a person of good character. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all people worthy of uh, that, that, uh, that um, virtue. Amin, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Amin, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And so I chose for tonight um, a hadith that exemplifies the Prophet Sallallahu as a man possessed of good character. He is the man utterly possessed of good character because this is his spontaneous response when he is uh, when he is in a situation that elicits a response, a response that would have elicited from me um, anger, or from uh, or 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 or, or um, frustration, or even violence. And we will see how the Prophet sallallahu responded. Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, we are about to uh, share one of the hadith from the treasures of the character of the Prophet sallallahu If you don't have wudu, I would make wudu right now and uh, make sure that you are in a state of wudu. Whenever you receive a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu try to be in a state of wudu, insha'Allah ta'ala. Bismillah. عن عبد الله بن سلام قال إن الله عز وجل لما أراد هدى زيد بن سعيا قال زيد ما من علامات النبوة شيء إلا وقد عرفته في وجهه سوى اثنين سوى اثنتين لما 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 أخبرهما منه يسبق حلمه جهل الجاهل ولا يزيده شدة الجهل عليه إلا حلمه فكنت أنطلق إليه لأخالطه وأعرف حلمه فخرج يوما ومعه علي بن أبي طالب فجاءه رجل كالبدوي 
قال يا رسول الله إن قرية بني فلان أسلموا وحدثتهم أنهم إن أسلموا أتتهم أرزاقهم رغدا وقد أصابتهم سنة وشدة وإني مشفق وإني مشفق عليهم that should be رغدا not رغدا رغدا وقد أصابتهم سنة وشدة وإني مشفق عليهم أن يخرجوا من الإسلام فإن رأيت أن ترسل ترسل لهم بشيء يعينهم قال زيد فقلت أنا أبتاع منكم بكذا وكذا وسق فأعطيته ثمانين دينارا فدفعها إلى الرجل وقال اعجل اعجل عليهم بها فأغنهم فلما كان قبل المحل بيوم أو يومين أو ثلاثة خرج رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم إلى جنازة خرج إلى جنازة في نفر من أصحابه فجبذت رداءه جبذة شديدة حتى سقط عن عاتقه ثم أقبلت بوجه جهم غليظ فقلت ألا تقضيني يا محمد فوالله ما علمتكم بني عبد المطلب لمطل فارتعدت فرائس عمر بن الخطاب عمر بن الخطاب كالفلك المستدير ثم رمى ببصره فقال أي عدو الله أتقول هذا لرسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وتصنع به ما أرى وتقول ما أسمع فوالذي بعثه بالحق لولا ما أخاف فوته لسبقني رأسك ورسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم ينظر إلى عمر في, في تؤدة وسكون ثم تبسم وقال أنا وهو أحوج إلى غير هذا أن تأمرني بحسن الأداء وتأمره بحسن التباعة اذهب يا عمر فقضه حقه وزده عشرين صاعا من تمر فقلت ما هذا قال أمرني رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم أن أزيدك مكان منازعتك مكان منازعتك فقلت أتعرفني يا عمر قال لا فمن أنت قلت أنا زيد بن ساعية قال الحبر قلت الحبر قال فما دعاك أن تفعل برسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم ما فعلت وتقول له ما قلت قلت يا عمر إنه لم يبقى من علامات النبوة شيء إلا وقد عرفته في وجه رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم حين نظرت إليه إلا اثنتين لم أخبر لم أخبر لا لم أخبرهما لم أخبرهما منه يسبق حلمه جهله ولا يزيده شدة جهل عليه إلا حلما فقد أخبرتهما فقد فقد أخبرته منه فأشهدك يا عمر أني رضيت بالله ربا وبالإسلام دينا وبمحمد النبي وأشهدك أن شطر مالي لله فإني أكثرها مالا صدق على أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم فقال عمر أو على بعضهم فإنك, لن فإنك لا تسعهم كلهم قلت أو على بعضهم قال فرجع عمر وزيد بن سعية إلى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم فقال زيد أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأن محمدا عبده ورسوله فآمن به وصدقه وبايعه وشهد معه مشاهد كثيرة عبد الله بن السلام and he was uh, a Jew who had uh, accepted the messenger uh, sallallahu alayhi wa, alayhi wa sallam and he is relating this hadith uh, about one of his brothers among Bani Israel whose name was Zayd ibn Sa'ya when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed to guide Zayd ibn Sa'ya Zayd said I beheld in his face in the Prophet's face every prophecy 
that bespoke him, save two which I had yet to exact from him. All of the prophecies of the Old Testament that he that were about the Prophet وسلم, and there are plenty, there are plenty of them. In Deuteronomy, there are prophecies relating to the Prophet وسلم. In the book of Isaiah, there are, there are prophecies relating to the Prophet وسلم, as the descendant of Ishmael and about the uh, geography in which he was and events that would happen in his life. So there are many prophecies in the Old Testament and Allah knows best what prophecies they're referring to and what text they're actually re referring to in this hadith. But they had signs that they saw in the Prophet وسلم, that bespoke him, save two which I had yet to exact from him, to draw from him, namely that his forbearance surpasses the unbridled anger of the irate, that, that, that he has such forbearance, he has such uh, grace that those who are so angry around him and raging around him, that he's able to forbear them, he's able to, um, to uh, carry the weight of that, um, uh, of that anger of people, and that the more such anger against him intensifies, the more his forbearance deepens. That the more you provoke him, the more graceful he is. The more that you push him, the more uh, forbearing he becomes, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So these two prophecies I had yet to exact from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I didn't know, was he, did he actually, did he possess these two traits or not? And so I would follow him to engage him and apprise myself of his forbearance. I wanted to uh, inform myself whether, whether, this, uh, whether these two traits are actually in his character or not. So he's going to test the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam until one day. The Prophet ﷺ left with Ali ibn Abi Talib السلام, and a seemingly Bedouin man approached him and said, right, this is a man who just come, came from, he, did, he didn't recognize him, one of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, and this is what he said, Messenger of Allah, such and such a village has entered Islam, and I promise that if they were to do so, their sustenance would come to them plentiful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would give them so much, so much so that they wouldn't need anymore. And they have been afflicted with famine and are in dire straits. And I am disquieted lest they should leave Islam after having embraced it, right? I, I, I fear that they would, just, they would just leave Islam like, like through a revolving door. They enter in and they would leave right away because I promised them and they are in a state of need. So if you deem it right to send them some relief, I interrupted, I being Zayd, right? Zayd ibn Sayyid, these are his own words. I interrupted, I will loan you. So this was the opportunity that Zayd saw. He said, now is my time to test the messenger of Allah sallallahu to see if he's truly the prophet. He said, I will loan you this money, a camel load right? The equivalent of 80 dinars, right? And he's, he, he didn't say that, right? But he's explaining that. He said to the Prophet I will loan you this many a camel load, this many a camel, I'll give you seven camel loads, six camel loads, three camel, whatever it was. But then he tells us it was the equivalent of 80 dinars, right? 80 dinars. Um, and so he handed the money to the man saying, rush to them with this and enrich them, playing, playing the role of a person who's like a savior for the day. Go to them quickly so that they can, you know, so that their need is fulfilled, showing the Prophet وسلم, his willingness and his eagerness to help in a situation in need. Um, and so, but then a day or two or three before the debt was due, right? So the debt is due, to, due on Tuesday. He's coming to him on Saturday right? Like a day like today, or today's Sunday. He's coming to them, to the, the Prophet a day or two or three before the debt is even due. The Messenger وسلم, then a day or two or three before the debt was due, the Messenger of Allah وسلم, followed a funeral procession among a group of his companions. Here's the Prophet وسلم, in a funeral procession following a funeral procession. I want you now to imagine this. And if you want to close your eyes, go ahead and close your eyes. The Prophet Sallallahu is following a funeral procession among his companions one or two or three days before a debt was due, okay? And so I yanked his shirt from behind 
with violent aggression, right? With aggression, I yanked his shirt from behind, causing it to hang off of his shoulders, right? And in another narration, they mentioned that this shirt was yanked so violently from behind that it tore in the front and it left red marks on the Prophet's blessed neck, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he left it to hang on his shoulders. Just imagine the provocation among his companions on a, few, on a day where he's following a funeral procession. He couldn't have chosen a, he couldn't have chosen a more solemn occasion than this occasion to test the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then I faced him fiercely, boorishly, and charged rudely, with rudeness. I, I, I faced him and charged, will you not pay me back, Muhammad? And even the Prophet's companions didn't call him Muhammad. The Prophet's wives did not call him Muhammad. The Prophet's Lord did not call him Muhammad. Allah never called the Prophet a Muhammad in the second person like this. But this person, Allah, when Allah calls upon the Prophet when he addresses him in the Quran, he addresses him, Ya ayyuhan Nabi, O Prophet, O Prophet, he calls him. But he calls all the other prophets by their names, Ya Musa, Ya Ibrahim, Ya Yahya, Khudin Kitab Biquwa. Allah SWT addresses the prophets by their first name, but not the Prophet Muhammad. The Prophet's own wives address him, Ya Rasulullah. His own companions address him, Ya Rasulullah. But this man is coming and he's saying, Ya Muhammad, right? Ya Muhammad, uh, will you not pay me back? By God, I knew not the clan of Abdul Muttalib to be debt delinquent. I didn't think that the people of, that the sons of Abdul Muttalib, right? The sons of Abdul Muttalib, this great man, Abdul Muttalib, whom uh, everyone in Mecca and Medina venerates as the man who, who uh, warned of the, of the Kaaba being protected by its Lord. I, you, are, you are his descendants, I never knew. You are one of his descendants, I never knew. The men of Abdul Muttalib, the clan of Abdul Muttalib, the tribe of Abdul Muttalib, the sons of Abdul Muttalib would be delinquent in paying back their debts. And he's coming to the Prophet, what? One or two or three days before the debt is even due. What delinquency are you talking about? No, he is testing the Prophet to the worst to the worst degree that you can imagine on the occasion of a funeral procession, and he is in the middle of following this funeral, and he's in, insulting him like this. Not just insulting him, but insulting his grandfather, insulting the memory of his grandfather Alayhi Salam Abdul Muttalib, who said, "Mil Baiti Rabbun Yahmi," the house has a Lord who will protect it. The first portion of that, the first half of that assertion, the first half of that promise is that is, is what all of the Arabs believed, that the house has a Lord. The house has a Lord, right? The house has a Lord. The, Allah is the Lord of this house. The second part of that statement, Yahmi, who will protect it, where does that come from? That's Yaqeen now on top of Iman. That is certainty on top of his faith. And where does that come from? At that Abdul Muttalib was the carrier of the light of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in his loins. وَتَقَلُّبُكَ فِي السَّاجِدِينَ And you're transitioning among all those who prostrated before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So he is insulting not just the Prophet, he's insulting his grandfather. He's insulting his, his, his ancestry, his 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 beloved Abdul Muttalib, about whom the Prophet said on the battlefield in, in Tabuk, he said, Ana nabiyu la kadib, ana ibn Abdul Muttalib. I am this, the Prophet about that. There's not even a fib. I am the son of Abdul Muttalib. He said with pride in his heart, reminding the Arabs of, of, of his status, of who he was. He was the son. He was the son of Abdul Muttalib through Abdullah. Alayhi salam, alayhi salam, amin ya rabbal alameen. And so he's insulting him, saying, I didn't know that the clan of Abdul Muttalib was debt delinquent, late in paying back their debts. <laughs> Look at the provocation here. And remember what we said about good character. Remember what we said about that. Bismillah. 
Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu, and you can imagine. Now, Umar is mentioning, Umar is mentioned here, right? Uh, Zayd ibn Sa'ya mentions Umar ibn Khattab. He said, Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu was thereat overcome with a rage, the likeness of whose harshness was that of a rocky tract of land. He was so, possess he was possessed with this rage that was like, he was as hard as a rock as hard as a rock, you could not move Omar, you could not, you could not move him from what was on his mind, which was, which was basically to take me out. Omar who wanted to take me out. And then he says, and he, and then he flung his glance at me and exclaimed, Omar who flung his glance at, at me and exclaimed, enemy of Allah, do you thus address the messenger of Allah? Dare you actually what I say, what I see? Dare you actually what I hear? Dare, dare you say, dare, dare you do what I say? Uh, dare you do what I see? And dare you speak what I hear? Dare you do as I see? And dare you speak what I hear? I swear by the one who sent him with the truth who sent the Prophet ﷺ with the truth. He's swearing by the one who sent the Prophet ﷺ with the truth, who sent him with the truth. Had it not been for my fear of surpassing his command, your head would surpass your body faster than my sword could cut through your neck. That's what Omar ibn Khattab said to him. <laughs> <laughs> Allahu Akbar alhamd. I swear by the one who sent him with the truth had it not been for my fear of surpassing his command your head would surpass your body faster than my sword could cut through your neck so that's the threat of Sayyidina Umar and the only thing that's going to move that that's, that's going to keep that rock in place is the mountain on which that rock is set Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Meanwhile, the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, remember what we said about good character, that it's spontaneous, that it does not, that it, that it, that it exudes with facility and with ease, without the need for premeditation or forethought, that this is the spontaneous response of the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Omar, the, the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, was observing Omar with deliberateness and composure. Then he smiled and said, he and I, are instead more in need of your commanding me to fulfill my debts. <laughs> You're commanding me to fulfill my debts. And we are one or two or three days before the debt is even due. I don't know about you, but if, I, if that was me, if that was me, after I clocked this guy, right? After I clocked this guy, and I don't even know who's yanking my shirt from behind me, but my reaction is this, right? Just you know, a quick, a quick knockout punch to the ground, and then we can reason later, right? So that's my response. But the Prophet ﷺ, one or two or three days before the debt is due, the Prophet ﷺ is saying, I am more in need that you should command me to, to fulfill my debts in a beautiful manner, and that you should command him to follow up in a beautiful manner. Go now, Omar and fulfill his right, and increase him 20 saw of dates. 20, uh, and, and the saw is the equivalent of four mud, and the mud is the equivalent of two handfuls. So 20 saw of dates is a total, total of 80 average hand, handfuls of dates. To give him that as increase, right? Just as a show of appreciation. Huh? This was the response of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This was his response two or three, one or two or three days before the debt is even due, which is just, it's mind boggling that he didn't go to, he didn't, he didn't defend himself. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he didn't defend himself physically. He didn't allow anyone else to defend him, him physically. And he didn't even defend himself against the insult. And he didn't respond to the insult. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the 24th juz of the Quran, I don't remember which surah, but we just read it last night, that um, respond to evil, respond to provocation, respond to anger, respond, just respond with that which is more beautiful. Respond to beauty with that which is more beautiful. Respond to goodness with that which is more beautiful. Respond to 
people with that which is more beautiful than what they offer, than what they say, and then how they are with you, respond with that which is most beautiful, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. And this is the, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is the first to respond. He's the first to embody this, these, the commands of his Lord and the prohibitions of his Lord. He's the first to avoid them. Meanwhile, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, okay, so, we, uh, so bismillah. Uh, so I asked him, what is this? He answered, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam commanded me to increase you in response to your provocation. The, so Zaid is wondering, where is all this 80 handfuls of, of dates? Where is this coming from? So Omar al who says, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam commanded me to increase you in response to your provocation. So I asked him, do you not know me, Omar? Do you not know me? Don't you recognize me? He answered, no, who are you? I said, Zayd ibn Sa'ya. He asked, the rabbi? So this is not just one of the Bani Israel. This is a rabbi among the Bani Israel. This is a man of knowledge. This is a man of tradition. This is a man of, 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 um, of, uh, of, uh, of morality. I answered, yes, the rabbi. He asked, what then possessed you to engage and address the Messenger of Allah as you did? Sallallahu alayhi wa, alayhi wa sallam. I explained to Omar, there was not a single prophecy left to draw from the face of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when I beheld him, except two that I had yet to exact from him, that his forbearance surpasses the unbridled anger of the irate, and that the more such anger against him intensifies, the more his forbearance deepens. But now, I have tested both in him. So I call you, Omar, to witness that I am content with Allah as Lord, with Islam as religion, and with Muhammad as prophet. And I call you to witness that half of all I possess is for Allah. I am the most wealthy of my tribe, and I give of it as charity to the Ummah of Muhammad. Omar who said, rather to some of them, for you will not be able to spend on them all. Many of them were poor. Um, uh, so Omar returned with Zayd ibn Sa'ya to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Zayd declared, I bear witness that no God has the right to be worshipped except Allah and that Muhammad is his slave and messenger. And, I, and he believed in him. This is now Abdullah ibn Salam concluding the narration. And he believed in him and Zayd believed in him, affirmed his truth, pledged his allegiance to him, and fought a great many battles with him. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barak ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim tasliman kathira. Um, and so with this, inshallah, we conclude tonight's hadith. Uh, and um, uh, whatever Sidi Tariq would like to do right now, uh, the floor is yours, uh, Sayyidi Tariq. And thank you so much to the Celebrate Mercy team uh, for uh, inviting me uh, to partake uh, on, uh, uh, on, on this panel of illustrious teachers and scholars, and I urge you to attend all of their lessons. These are all my teachers, they're all my friends, they're my brothers, they're my sisters, and you will have uh, much to gain from them. I mean, I've been on you. Jazakumullah khair. Thank you so much, uh, Sheikh Hisham, for that really beautiful lesson and story that uh, we can learn a lot from. That was a really beautiful commentary on that story. Jazakumullah khair. So we have a few questions and let's see if, uh, if you all wanna raise your hand. I do see one hand raised from Hamdiya. I'll let you use your microphone, Hamdiya, uh, to ask your question on the mic. We'll start with a microphone question here, inshallah. Hamdiya, I'll give you a few seconds to, um, to, uh, to ask your question, inshallah. Hamdiya. Okay. She's not turning her mic on. All right. So let's go to a written question. Here is a written question. I have been told, this is from an anonymous attendee. I've been told not to give or loan people money because they may use it for drugs or alcohol or because, uh, well, I was reading it and then someone moved the question. Okay. I've been told not to give or loan people money because they may use it for drugs 
or alcohol or because they may return to me and ask for more. I loaned or gave money out of charity and love and had had neighbors always returning to me when I was busy asking for more. I'd like to know where to draw the line for my own well-being and sanity. In fact, I lived at one place where I got so tired of the neighbors going to me for money that I felt like throwing rocks at them. So where do I draw the line? How do I get them to leave me alone once it gets started? Uh, you, you're muted, Sheikh Hisham. You're muted. Hold on. Let let him unmute himself. Go ahead. Okay, Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, this is a very good question here. Um, that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, calls us to give in moderation. Um, and uh, you know, when you give, of course, you, you know, you're not, you, you won't know until you give how people will respond unless you know the situation of the people themselves and the, the you know, uh, whether giving would actually pose more harm than good. Um, you know, the Arabs would say, in akramta kariman malaktahu, wa in akramta la iman malakak, right? If you are gracious or generous to a noble person, uh, you uh, you will possess that person. In other words, you you know basically um, he's yours. He's loyal for life. And if you uh, are no, generous to a mischievous person, right, then he basically owns you from that point on, right? <laughs> so the the that's a it's a, a wisdom right of the Arabs that they that they that they knew from giving to those uh, who uh, whose needs were. Uh, they had to be evaluated. And so sometimes the worst thing that you can do to, to, to a person is to give them in their state of need. Because if that person is the type of person who is a needy person, then you're actually doing more harm by giving him than uh, by actually uh, serving to establish him otherwise, uh, which would uh, be much better. So by uh, certain people may actually need a push uh, in other ways than to uh, continue giving them money uh, by giving them opportunities of work, right? And they're saying, I heard about this job opening, I heard about this, I heard about that. Something that's going to establish them independently would do, uh, would, would go much further for that person and would help that person uh, to come out of their state of need than to extend to them um, a, 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 uh, a, a, a regular flow of support that is actually going to be to their further detriment. And then, you know, it ends up biting us uh, afterwards when, when, when we're in that situation. Uh, and so you want to be judicious uh, in how you give your help. The Prophet ﷺ never turned anyone down, but he helped people in various ways. And there are many, many ways to help people uh, in their situation. So one thing, to, that what wisdom um, dictates is that we place things where they properly belong. And if, if a person is in need, we have to assess exactly what that need is and what that source of that need is. Now, if you know for a fact that that person is going to use the money for drugs or something like that, then obviously you don't want to support that. Um, and if you don't know and you just have a hunch or you have a fear that this man is on the side of the road and you don't know what he's going to use it for, no, you give to him because you... you you know, you want to you want to um, uh, you want to assume the best in people. You want to give people the benefit of the doubt, right? And so you don't want to just assume that a person is going to uh, use that money uh, for drugs or alcohol or something like that. Uh, but the best thing to do, if you want to be on the safe side, is give them uh, a you know you can go to a subway and buy you know a whole bunch of five dollar gift cards, right? Get 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 a hundred dollars of five dollar gift cards from Subway and just give the person a Subway gift card. You know, that, that way you're assured that the help that that that, that the, the person's actually going to um, uh, have a meal out of it. Uh, that's if you want to really be on the safe side. Uh, but other than that, if you don't have the the means to do that or you don't you just don't you left your cards at home and you want to give that money that person money, by all means give that person money. And uh, you're benefiting yourself ultimately. The, the one who gives his wealth in order to purify himself. Amin.
I'm going to ask a question from Saleh Jabin, mashallah, who was with us on the, uh, the Umrah trip, if you remember Saleh from Chicago. Um, and she, uh, mashallah, bismillah, she says, Assalamu alaikum, Jazakallah khair for your time and wisdom. This day's theme could not have come on a better day. Two exclamation points. Alhamdulillah. Please, could you give, could you share the prophetic medicine to cultivate forbearance, patience, and self-control? Barakallahu fikum. So how do we, how do we increase our helm and our patience? How can we be prophetic like this hadith displays? The Prophet said, إِنَّمَا الْحِلْمُ بِالتَّحَلُّمْ وَإِنَّمَا الصَّبْرُ بِالتَّصَبُّرْ That um, forbearance is acquired by forcing yourself to forbear. And patience is requiring is, is acquired by compelling yourself to be patient. That that's the there's no trick about it, right? It's it's just, it's to be reminded in the moment that the Prophet uh, would have responded in this way and then to force yourself to, to respond in that same way. The more we do that, the easier it becomes. Um, and so there's two things that a person needs, a, um, uh, a repertoire of knowledge uh, that um, about the virtues of patience and forbearance, about the, the attributes of the Prophet ﷺ that are praiseworthy in the eyes of Allah and praiseworthy in the eyes of his companions. Uh, a hadith just like what we covered today could be a part of that repertoire. Uh, knowledge to remind us in the heat of the moment. And then um, action that is going to be the exact opposite of the vice that you are seeking to avoid. And so if it's rashness, if it's anger, then you need action that is direct and opposite that uh, or opposing that vice. Uh, so in a, in, a, in, a, in a time where your patience is being tested by anger, you want to respond to that anger with the exact opposite by uh, putting it out with water, but like the Prophet uh, said, by um, by dhikr, Allah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah. La ilaha. Putting it out with water, you mean like making wudu or like ghusl? The Prophet said that anger is from Lucifer, and Lucifer was created from fire, and fire is only put out by water. Right, and so, uh, uh, so if you, um, he said, and fire is indeed put out by water. Uh, he said, inna, because fire is also put out by in other means. But he said inna, not innama. And fire is put out. I'm going to go back. I lost the flow. <laughs> um, so anger is from Lucifer. And Lucifer was created from fire. And fire is put out by water. And so if any of you is uh, overcome by his anger, let him let him perform wudu. Let him perform wudu. And if you are angry, if your anger finds you standing, then sit down. And if your anger finds you sitting, then lie down. These are prophetic medicine, this is prophetic medicine uh, in action, in a deed that you can actually do to quell your anger, to, to, to help, to, to suppress it and to um, reorient it for that which is noble as opposed to that which is egotistical. And so righteous anger is something that you are rewarded for. Anger for the sake of Allah and His Messenger. Anger for justice. Uh, anger for um, uh, you know this righteous anger, right? This is rewarded and, and this is uh, praised. You you can never get rid of anger. The uh, Imam Shafi said, "Man falam yaghdab fadaka himar." Who whoever uh, whoever's anger is provoked and doesn't res doesn't respond with anger, that's a donkey. Right? That's a donkey. Anger is part of who we are, but we have to be able to orient that response toward Allah and His Messenger. Orient that response so that the anger is uh, rooted uh, or, or that the anger is, um, is directed to that which will bring about a better situation. Uh, and, that, and if the anger is rooted in that which will um, satiate the ego, or redress a wrong that was done to oneself in order to exact some degree of revenge from the person, then you know that, that's a, that, that that fit is going to elicit out of you an apology afterwards. And every time that we have gotten angry, haven't we apologized? Haven't we been moved to apologize? Haven't we felt the weight of what we have done that actually 
says, you know what, uh, you should really apologize for what you've done. So we don't want to put ourselves in a position where we have to apologize for anything that we do. I mean, you know, I mean the Prophet ﷺ was in control of himself. And so um, the, the, these character traits are acquired through the practice of them. By practicing them, we acquire them. By being patient, you become patient. By being forbearing, you become forbearing. And, and, that, and that's really all there is to it. So practice makes prophetic. <laughs> Sofian, Sof I just came up with that. Sofian um, can now use the mic. Uh, Sofian has a question. So I can you hear me? Yes. So um, my question is, so like, so um, it's like, how would you how would you know if you like your money is harm and halal, and like how can you um, how can you tell if it's, if, if it's for something good or bad? Uh, in terms of the origin, where your money is coming from, if it's haram or halal. Yeah. Well, you you would just have to assess where the money is coming from. Is it coming from a source that is within the bounds of Sharia in terms of what is wajib or uh, mustahab, uh, what is mandatory or uh, or um, uh, uh, recommended, uh, or is it coming from a source that is haram or makruh, uh, forbidden or uh, or reprehensible, right? So if the source of the money is coming from uh, a means that uh, is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger, i.e. it falls within the bounds of sharia uh, in terms of what is uh, permissible for us, uh, then you know that the money is coming from a source that is permissible. And if not, uh, if otherwise, then you you will want to uh, try your very best, inshallah, to find a means uh, to make your livelihood from uh, a source that is uh, laudatory and uh, meritorious. I mean, you know, we have a question from uh, Suleiman, age 11. It says here, age 11, <laughs> are you... Are you allowed to defend other people's rights like Omar radiallahu anhu did for the Prophet وسلم, or is that considered being too aggressive? Well, Omar radiallahu anhu had to go through the school of the, the training of the Prophet وسلم, and Omar radiallahu anhu did not remain like this. Omar radiallahu anhu softened up a lot toward the, um, toward the end of the Prophet وسلم's life and, and well into his own life. Omar Radran, who softened up a tremendous uh, amount. And it's, it's because the Prophet وسلم, balanced him out. Now, the anger of Omar was properly placed. That is praiseworthy anger, right? It was for Allah and it was for his messenger. But the, the act that the Prophet وسلم, had to curb Omar from, from actually engaging Right, that act would have fallen into um, the categories of haram or makruh. Right, he wanted to kill that person. Right, he wanted he wanted to kill, and that would have been uh, an unwarranted act. But the anger itself was exactly what you want to have for the Prophet You want that anger for the Prophet You want that anger for for God. You want that anger for the rights of other people. You want that anger, but you want to make sure that whatever act then. Uh, is predicated on that anger, uh, whatever act uh, is going to follow that anger, that that act be pleasing to Allah and His Messenger also. Uh, and so um, one may, like I'll give you an example, um, especially as an 11-year-old, you'll, you'll, you'll be able to imagine this with your uh, incredible create, creative mind, that one, on one occasion, Imam Ali, السلام, the Prophet's cousin, whom the Prophet السلام, raised in his home with Khadija, السلام, the Prophet السلام, was on, uh, Ali السلام, was in the battlefield, and he was able with his uh, prowess to, um, to take the sword out of the hand of his enemy. He was able to wrest the sword away from his enemy, and that enemy at that point spit in his face. He spit right into the face of Imam Ali alayhi salam. And Imam Ali alayhi salam held back, right? He held back. And he was about to finish him off, but he held back. And the man said, what? You couldn't finish the job. And so Imam Ali alayhi salam said, I was about to smite you for the, for, for my, my, uh, my, for, for the sake of Allah, right? But when you spit in my face, it became personal. 
right? It became personal. My intention changed. My anger then became misplaced, in other words, right? My anger was for Allah in the beginning, and that it would have been praiseworthy. It would have been permissible. But now that it became personal and it became directed, it became part of my, my ego got involved now. I ha the act itself is impersonal. The act itself is impermissible. I cannot act on it now. And so this man was taken aback, obviously, by what the by the valor of Sayyidina Ali salam, and the rules of conduct and engagement that are not just in the outward, but, are, but, but have to do with the inward as well, with his intention and with where his heart is and where he is placing his anger in his heart. In his heart. Jazakumullah khair. There is uh, someone whose name is, this will be the last question, inshallah, someone whose name is Galaxy. I think they're named after their phone or something in the chat. But uh, Galaxy, uh, you can use your microphone if you want to ask your question. I'll give you five seconds here. Okay, uh, we'll just skip that person's question. And one question that's written here is, um, I often find myself sad when I cannot live up to the patience that the Prophet Sallallahu showed. I know that we can never reach the, the, the state of that, you know, the best of creation, but how do I not get down for being deficient? No, uh, I mean, uh, who who among us is able to reflect the light of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? You know the the Arabs say yom asal yom asal wa yom basal, right? That a day of honey and a day of onions. Uh, sometimes you're able to do it, sometimes you're not, right? And we're going to have our challenges. It's not going to be it's not going to be easy, right? And part of, and part of the fall is is in the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa taala. The, the wisdom of Allah is that we fall from grace. Allah subhanahu wa taala created us in order to manifest to us our shortcomings because these shortcomings will bring us back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, in a state of humility uh, so that we know just how far we uh, we are from the Prophet sallallahu These stories of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi they are they are at once comforting and discomforting um, they, they they are they give us such hope um, but at the same time uh, they leave us in utter awe of him at the same time because who can who's who you know he shows us what's possible but who who among us can actually um can actually fulfill it uh to to the extent that he filled it you know he, he fulfilled potentiality he fulfilled the potentiality for human virtue to such a degree that it was godlike in the earth he reflected the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right back into the world uh, in a way that he could not even outdo himself in that, right? And he had to set that standard in order to, to show us what is humanly possible. Now, that should not leave us at all whatsoever in a state of despair because that is rule number one in the handbook of Lucifer. He was called Iblis because Ablasa, he despaired. Of the of the of the mercy of Allah and in His compassion, He despaired. Ablasa yublisu iblasan is to despair. And so when when He convinces us that we are unworthy, that we are nothing, that look at how patient He was and look at how rash you are, look at how generous He was, look at how miserly you are. Well, He's just trying to He's just trying to prove to us that we were not worthy of His prostration, and and we and we go for the bait. Right, we go for the bait. We're suckers who just go for the bait. Like you get me every time. Yeah, I'm not worthy. I, I'm not worthy. I, you know, I, you, we look upon ourselves with low self-esteem. We look upon ourselves like like there's no hope that, that we can't actually uh, rise to the occasion whatsoever. That every time we fall, that we actually belong where we fall. And this was never part of the program. فَتَلَقَّى آدَمُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ كَلِمَاتٍ فَتَابَ عَلَيْهِ إِنَّهُ هُوَ التَّوَابُ الرَّحِيمُ. And so Adam. Um, learned from his Lord words. Adam acquired words from his Lord, and so his Lord, Lord tur turned toward him. Uh, in, indeed, he is the relenting, the compassionate. And so, yes, we are going to fall, fall short. Of course we're going to fall short because he is Rasulullah. We cannot outdo him, but, we, but the beauty, the beauty is in the attempt 
to um, to draw closer unto him by reflecting his light. That is the beauty. That's that's the whole. That's the whole beauty. That's the that's the dynamic between him and us. Is that the the door of intimacy is open to his heart, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, through two ways: through following him in his footsteps and manifesting his light in the way that he exemplified. That's one way of knowing the Prophet ﷺ and drawing closer to him. And then the second way is in the opposite, is in not being able to manifest his light, is in not being able to uh, reflect his light in our actions and in our states and in our words. By not being able to reflect his light, we are, we, we are drawn closer into his intimacy as well. Because this this for us, this makes him even larger in our hearts. This makes him even more venerated in our hearts. That I know I'm this much further away from him means that I honor him this much more in, a, in my heart, and I yearn to be like him that much more. So both, in both, there is a, a nearness. In both, there is an intimacy. In both, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow our days of honey to out to out um, to out uh, run or to surpass our days of of uh, onions. But if they don't, if they don't, then we then then may Allah subhanahu wa taala protect us from two things: from despair, right? From despair, and from um, and from <clears throat> and from believing what. And from and from following Shaitan to our own demise, because Shaitan is there, and we have to call him out. We have to recognize where is this thought even coming from, and we seek refuge in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala from the accursed Lucifer, Amin ya Rabbil Alamin. And so, um, by drawing close, but but through both realizations, uh, through both um, the act of obedience and the act of disobedience, from both we can become. Uh, uh, redeemed uh, by the Prophet Jazakallah I khair mean, um, One person was really insisting that we ask this quick question At what period did they go to Masjid Bayah? Masjid Bayah? Yeah, B-A-Y-A -A. Are you familiar? At what point did the Prophet uh, uh, what, um, Masjid Bayah Muhammad um, maybe if the questioner could ask, uh, could could give a little more detail about what he's asking about, it doesn't. Uh, that, yeah. That doesn't reference anything for me, uh, because of my ignorance, not because of, uh, not because. I don't of, know. I don't know if this is the masjid of at Hudaybiyah. I'm not sure. If that's if that's I mean, it's, you know, then that was at Hudaybiyah. If it, if it was the pledge to defend uh, the honor of Uthman. Um, and to avenge his death, if that mm -hmm. or his, you know, there, he was rumored to have died. If that's it, then it is at Hudaybiyah. But okay. I'm, I'm not aware of um, what's being referenced here. Okay. Um, there was one other question I felt. I'm going to just throw in one more here because I felt like this is really important on this topic, which was um, uh, someone was saying how you know. Uh, hold on. Yes, salam. In practice and exercising the Prophet Sallallahu Sunnah in a very constricted and less diverse society, oftentimes the challenge is that our intention and mannerisms are perceived as meek. And so it is easy to sort of be taken advantage of or, or, or maybe categorized as meek. So how do we tackle this, especially in the workplace or in the community as such? So our, you know, our hilm or forbearance doesn't get mistaken, you know, um, mistook for uh, being weak or meek. And this is one of the signs for the end of time. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that uh, that forbearance is considered weakness or meek, like you're saying, and and oppression is considered something to be proud of, something that brings you honor, right? The, the exploitation of other people. Uh, the more that you can exploit, right? Uh, that uh, that you that you 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 gain more honor through that exploitation. The 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 one percent, right? And so this is the uh, this is the sign for the end of time and you're you know we we must we you know the names and the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa are infused in, into us all of his names and attributes are infused into us and his um he you know for a certain circumstance 
right? For a certain, certain circumstance, Helm will be the proper response. For another circumstance, Helm would not be the proper response. You see what I'm saying? These things, these, these virtues must be placed situationally. They must be placed situationally. And so from a place of power or from a place of strength, if you can show forbearance, then that goes, um, that goes, uh, you know, that, that, that would speak volumes, right? That would speak volumes. But from a place where you are being bullied or you are being treated as um, basically, um, you're, you're being abused, right? You're being abused. Helm in that case is not the proper response. There is another response that is proper in that case. And that's, that, that's the meaning of wisdom. Wisdom is hikmah, right, in Arabic. And hikmah means to put things where they properly belong. Uh, and so one of the, the, the ihsan, right, ihsan to the mutakabbir is takabbur, right? Ihsan to um, a, a person who is arrogant is to respond to that person with utter pride. Right, that is the way that you are beautiful toward that person. That is a, an act, a gesture of beauty toward that person. That when a person is a tyrant, when a person is arrogant, that you respond to that arrogance with pride, right? Uh, to show because that's the language that he will understand, right? Um, and and for a for a, a, um, for a person who is for in another situation, the response of humility is is a good response to have to toward a child. For example, or toward a peer, or towards someone who um, who provokes you, and you have the upper hand, right? You have the ability to to really teach this person a lesson. You are you 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 have a position of strength, and it's perceived and it's known and understood like that. But if you have pity of, uh, upon a person on uh, on a day like that, like the Prophet sallallahu he goes back to Mecca and he says, "What do you think?" Right? What do you think I'm going to do with you today? <laughs> That's the question he asked them. What do, you, what do you propose that I do with you today? And they said, Akhun Karim ibn Akhin Karim. They said, a noble brother, the son of a noble brother, whom they used to call, you know, they, they used to call him Ibn Abi Kapsha, the son of Abu Kapsha, who is the husband of Halima Saadiya, saying that, you know, yeah, you may say that you're the son of Abdul Muttalib, right? Uh, uh, but no, you're the, you're the son of Abu Kapsha. Right, that was your wet nurse, and you were raised in his house. They ascribed him to Abu Kapsha, who was in their mind a nobody, right? But he was the he was the first caretaker of the Prophet. Allahu Akbar. What an amazing role to play in the life of the Prophet to rear him uh, until the age of five. Uh, he was he was his first, he was his father, right? He was his first father, Abu Kapsha was his first father. Huh? Before Abu Talib, before Abdul Muttalib, before Abu Talib, Abu Kapsha was his first father for five years. And so the Prophet ﷺ responds saying, he said, لا, لا لكم إلا كما قال يوسف لإخوته. I don't say to you anything except what Yusuf said to his brothers. What Yusuf said to his brothers. And Yusuf said what to his brother, he addressed his brothers from a position of strength and power and authority over them and over their affair. He said, لا تثريب عليكم اليوم يغفر الله لكم وهو أرحم الراحمين. No blame on you today. Uh, and may Allah forgive you, for He is the most compassionate of those who show compassion. Mm. And um, and on that point, um, one of uh, our teachers said that the that prayer of Sayyidina Yusuf السلام, for his brothers, right, for his eleven brothers, his intercession for his eleven brothers is what got them their forgiveness. It was the, that that prayer and that intercession of Yusuf that that got them forgiven. And Ramadan. Is, is our Yusuf. It is the intercession of Ramadan that will get our 11 months forgiven, inshallah. All the rest of the 11 months, they will be forgiven through the intercession of Ramadan. And the Prophet said, وَرَمَضَانُ إِلَى رَمَضَانُ مُكَفِّرَاتُ مَا بَيْنَهُنَّ He said that the Sarawat al-Khams, وَالْجُمَعَ إِلَى الْجُمَعَ وَرَمَضَانُ إِلَى رَمَضَانُ The five prayers, Jum'ah to the next Jum'ah and Ramadan to the next Ramadan, they're an expiation for all of the sins that happened between them. إِذَا اِشْتُنِبَتْ الْكَبَائِرَ As long as the cardinal sins were avoided. We are 
uh, on a night that could be Laylatul Qadr. I ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala find you on this night, uh, seeking his countenance, seeking his face, uh, praying ardently, committing yourself to his book, um, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your fasting and your prayer, your recitation of his book, your standing at night, uh, may he accept your sacrifice, your generosity, and I want to appeal to you all now in this moment to give generously to celebrate mercy. I want everyone to give generously to this incredible organization that has been doing such prophetic work over the past decade. Five people have been able to impact the lives in some way, to some degree, of 50 million people on the planet. And Sidi Tariq is taking tabs on that. For, through the posts and through the campaigns and through the work that they're doing, the money that they're raising and the, the publicity that they're getting, five people, three of whom are full-time, but they have taken a great hit in Ramadan and have not been able to sustain uh, themselves for the next year. They had projects that they have to cancel for this next year because they have not been able to hit their goal. So I want everyone within earshot of this message to become a monthly donor to Celebrate Mercy. Please support this work. I believe in it. I am a monthly donor to Celebrate Mercy, and I and I and I also will will continue to be so. Continue to support this organization so long as I live. I believe in the mission. I believe in the team at Celebrate Mercy. Uh, may Allah bless them. Become a monthly donor tonight to Celebrate Mercy, and then uh, on Tuesday especially, uh, Tariq is going to tell you how you can really help in a big way on Tuesday, Inshallah Taala. But my agreement with you is that you become a monthly donor to Celebrate Mercy tonight, inshallah. Please do that. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Jazakum Allah khair, Sheikh Hisham. And please, uh, I want to urge everyone to also follow Lanterna on social media so you can follow the great work that and the great lessons that Sheikh Hisham is giving. We gave a lot more time to questions today um, because we just had so many questions and I apologize if we couldn't get to your question. I I always feel bad that we have to skip some questions and we try to keep it on topic and there's so many remaining questions. So please forgive us for that. But we, we kind of promised that the lesson would take half an hour and we don't want to keep everyone too late uh, with the program. So if you want to ask your question tomorrow night, inshallah, please re-ask the question or we can recommend that you, you know, raise your hand in the Zoom application and we can turn on your microphone in the future nights when we host this program. Shala, this will be a program we do at 11 p.m. every night until the end of Ramadan. And we also have a daily program at 1 p.m. Uh, on Surah Yasin, which will be tomorrow, resuming tomorrow, inshallah. And just so you don't miss any video, any recording, any live stream, make sure you subscribe on YouTube and you click the bell so that you get notified, inshallah. Sheikh Hisham was referring to our Ramadan fundraising drive. And, uh, this this picture is a bit outdated because this is the a, a screenshot from our campaign from earlier this morning. We have now surpassed two hundred thousand dollars, which is fifty percent of our goal. So we are now at fifty percent of our fundraising goal for Ramadan, with only about five or six days left of Ramadan uh, to go. So we really want to encourage everyone if you have been benefiting from these programs if you have been benefiting from the webinars, from the classes, from the sessions, from the Friday gems, from the khutbahs, from the, the, the reciting of the Quran and the commentaries, then please, inshallah, this, none of this is free. None of this is free. We have to pay for the Zoom application. We have to pay for multiple expenses. We have staff. So we wanna really continue this work. We wanna continue to bring you these programs, especially during the pandemic when all of these uh, in-person programs have been canceled. And we had to cancel our own programs, uh, our own fundraising events, like the dinners where we usually raise half of the money that we, uh, that we typically raise in Ramadan are through those dinners that we had to cancel because of the coronavirus. Um, and Ramadan is where we raise most of the money that we need to put on our programs throughout the year. So inshallah, we hope that you all will come in, come strong, strongly come in for us in these last days of Ramadan, these last nights of Ramadan. And on Tuesday night, we want to win a prize. LaunchGood is giving a prize of $20,000 on Tuesday to the organization that raises the most money starting on Tuesday night, the 27th night of Ramadan. They are going to give $20,000 to the organization that raises the most money 
or the organization that has the most supporters. We really could use that $20,000. So what we want to urge you guys to do is give to Celebrate Mercy every night in Ramadan until the end of Ramadan, because any of these nights could be Laylatul Qadr, right? However, on Tuesday night, you know, if you're going to make a large donation, then try to plan it for Tuesday night, inshallah, because if we get the most donations on Tuesday evening, starting at 7 p.m. Eastern, all the way till Wednesday at 7 p.m., within that 24 hours, if we get the most donations, we will get a $20,000 prize for Celebrate Mercy. So yes, Sheikh Hisham was saying, become a monthly donor. That would be awesome. You can do that tonight, right? But also plan to give on Tuesday night and plan to give every night until the end of Ramadan. But Tuesday is where we're hoping they're quadrupling their daily prize. We would like to win that prize, inshallah. This is the website where you can give. We do accept zakat because we use it for a scholarship fund for those who are zakat eligible, who want to attend some of our paid programs, but they may not be able to afford those programs. So inshallah, we want to urge you guys to please give and give generously in Ramadan to help us continue putting on programs that spread learning about the Prophet Sallallahu knowledge and love of the Prophet Sallallahu For larger donations, inshallah, we have gifts that we send in the mail for those who make donations of $50, $100, $500, $700. You know, it goes up. We have really beautiful gifts that you'll see on the fundraising page on Launch Good, inshallah. We also have a contest that you can participate in if you'd like, inshallah. This is a contest where on Tuesday night, all the way till Wednesday night, if you think you can get 20 friends to donate to celebrate mercy, even if it's a dollar, then you can become eligible to win an Umrah trip. Yes, you heard that correctly. If you can get 20 people to donate a dollar to celebrate mercy between Tuesday night and Wednesday night, then you could become eligible to win an Umrah trip with Celebrate Mercy or maybe a huge cash prize. This is a great way for you to volunteer, to help us with our fundraising, and to potentially win a huge prize, inshallah. So if you're interested in that, go to celebratemercy.com slash contest. That's celebratemercy.com slash contest and learn how you can join one of these contests. We have one coming up on Tuesday evening, inshallah. We also have one of the appreciation gifts is this book. Um, if you haven't gotten this book yet, it's a beautiful translation of 400 hadiths, 415 a hadith on the beauty and the personality of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, peace be upon him. So if, you're, if you haven't gotten this book yet, it's a hardcover book, really beautiful, really amazing. And you can get this by donating to Celebrate Mercy in Ramadan. A $20, I'm uh, sorry, a $200 donation will get you this book for free. It's a $40 book. Or you can order this book on our website, inshallah. And that's a coupon where you can get a $5 discount, inshallah. Lastly, what I'm going to say is that that book that you just saw uh, was taught in a two-week online course called Portrait of a Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That course was recorded. So we have all the videos from that course. It's 22 hours of lessons from teachers such as Sheikh Hisham Mahmoud, such as Sheikh Yasser Fahmi, such as Sheikh Ubaidullah Evans, you know, Sheikh Yahya, uh, Sheikh Muslima Permul, and others. So if you're interested in registering for this course and getting access to those 22 hours of lessons where that book, this book, Ash-Shama'il al-Muhammadiyah, is taught cover to cover, 415 hadiths. If you're interested in this class, you can register and you can still get access to all these recordings for six months where you complete that. Tonight, we just learned one hadith. Imagine a class where you go through 415 a hadith on the beauty of the Prophet Sallallahu and his personality, what he ate, what he drank, how he walked, how he talked, how he laughed, his sense of humor, what did he wear, what were the clothes that he wore, how was he in his home, what was his home like, you know, um, what did he look like, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, all of these, all of these, you know, 
things are, are, are these issues and these beautiful aspects of his personality are addressed in this book, Ash-Shama'il al 415 hadiths. So in a, if you can't afford the class, it's a $55 class, then we do have scholarships available. We never want money to prevent anyone from learning about the Prophet وسلم, and falling in love with the Prophet Muhammad وسلم. So please register whether you can afford this class or not. We will make a way inshallah because we have generous donors who help us to be able to give out scholarships uh, for our paid programs inshallah. We look, for, <clears throat> we look forward to seeing you inshallah in future programs tomorrow for the Surah Yaseen class at 1 p.m. And tomorrow night, again, for the continuation of this program on the character of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Thank you all for uh, joining. Thank you for supporting Celebrate Mercy. Because of you, we're able to conduct these programs that spread the life and the love of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As he said, as he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, anni walau aya, tell people about me. Tell people about me, even if it's just one verse, one sentence, something. And you all have been able to have enabled us to tell millions of people about the Prophet. وسلم, and we hope you'll continue enabling us to do that, inshallah. And it will count as a sadaqa jariya for you and a means for you to be uh, to join the Prophet وسلم, in the next life. Jazakumullah khair. Uh, we'll see you all tomorrow. Assalamu alaikum.